morning everybody. It's Monday morning and we've got another week of art activities for you to do at home. Uh, we're going to look at mini beasts today. Maybe you've done this topic in school, but mini beasts are the tiny creatures around us that we barely even notice. Only when they annoy us we notice them. So we're going to have a look at this. Uh, this is the source sheet we're going to have today to look at our mini beasts because we cannot really get them in from outside. I don't think they'd like that very much. So we're going to use this as a source for doing our observational drawings about our mini beasts. So you've got your topic there and we're going to end up with um, a little scenario that you can build up and that you can use in various different ways through the course of the week. I'll start off with my thinnest pen. This is 0 0.3 millimetres, so it's very, very um, fine. And I'm going to start off with this creature here in the middle. It looks bigger than the others. It's got a good wingspan there. It's called a dragonfly. Now there are dragonflies and there are damselflies and they're very different actually. We know this is a dragonfly uh, mostly because it's got huge eyes on the top of its head here. So damselflies don't have such big eyes as that. So we've got a dragonfly here and I'm going to have a go at um, drawing it on my paper. Now, I keep looking over here because what I'm doing today is an observation drawing. And an observation drawing is a drawing that you do from the real object that's sitting in front of you. Now, we are not drawing the real object because we haven't got a dragonfly and it's not a very good thing to go out and catch one and make it sit up beside your paper. I don't think it's going to last very long if you did that. So the next best thing is looking at this, this picture here that someone else has done. That's the best we can do with this. Because living creatures are not really there for us to harm. We should look after them. So if I look very carefully on the markings here, it's really quite delicate. Every tiny little thing and you would hardly really notice it. If you went to the park, uh, to where there's water, you wouldn't really see many of these creatures. They're quite elusive. And they're very, very specially made for a particular purpose, just like us. So if you look very, very carefully, see all the patterns that you can see on its body. They're quite amazing, actually. Every sort of section is completely different than the last one. These marvellous wings, oh dear, I have not left room for my wings here, so I'll just do one side for you. You can remedy that when you do yours. Huge and beautiful wings. So you can see the second wing down here kind of overlaps the top one, and the top bit here has got a bit of cartilage or something in it, which holds the wing out because the wing has to be able to fly that's the point of them so they've got this uh, firm cartilage here and then they've got this amazing intricate set of they're almost like veins that we have coming out of the wing of course sort of semi like leaves in a way or like bricks that we the pattern that we put to build the bricks on houses. So we've got all these marvellous things here that are just so beautifully designed for us so that we can marvel at them and think how wonderful they are. Something so small and so seemingly unnecessary even is just so beautifully put together for us like this. So you can do that. Here's the eyes up here. So when you've finished, I'm not, I'm not going to put the legs on, when you've finished, you can very carefully cut it out. And I'm just going to show you how to do that. My scissors here, I've got my paper, take it off the board. Now, usually when I cut out, I leave a little margin. I don't cut on the line. I leave a little margin 
because some of the things that you have to cut out are very, very fine. And we want to make sure we don't cut through them. And then one of the insects lose its antennae or something like that. But take your time with this. Uh, there's no rush. We're all at home today, so we don't have to worry too much about going on to the next thing. Okay, so here's my uh, fl uh, dragonfly, and I'm going to pop it uh, just here to keep it for myself, and I'm going to go on to the okay, next. My next drawing, I'm going to use my fine liner, which is slightly thicker than this pen I used here, and I'm going to have a go, I think, at this little centipede. Uh, which is a, a quite a small little creature and it's got lots of segments on its body. Some of them big, some of them smaller. And it's got lots and lots of little legs. One comes out, at least one from every segment. Seems to be the way and on the other side as well. Centipede, lots of legs. And its head, there's not much different than its, in its head from the rest of the body, but it's got two antennae coming out here like this. Okay, so that's really quite small. Um, the, the little sections, is, they're quite hard to see. You could just uh, embellish them a little bit there because they are three-dimensional. They're not flat. And then I shall get my scissors and I shall cut that out as carefully as okay, I can. I'll try doing this worm down here, which is again lots of segments. It's got one larger segment just there and worms live uh, in the ground and they process the soil and they make the soil uh, very good for growing things. That's their role. So I've got this segment that comes here, and then the end, and then I've got lots of these sort of muscle bits that contract and expand, that move the earth through the earthworm's body, and out the other end. It doesn't seem to have any antennae at all. The front bit is a little bit pointy like that. So I'm going to cut that one out as well. Okay. This time I've got my see-through plastic and I'm going to use my Sharpie because the Sharpie works really well on the plastic. And I'm going to have a go. This is giant house spider. Okay, so let's have a go at that. We've got two eyes here. We've got like a head. We've got a thorax here. And then we've got the, the body like this. And of course it's got eight legs. So you could very carefully draw all the little segments to the legs because all these little creatures are really intricate and because they're so small we hardly ever even stop to look at them but when somebody does these lovely drawings it really helps us to appreciate them a little bit Some people are scared of these. It's quite hard to understand that. I think it's all a bit irrational, really. I'm one of them. I don't really like them very much for some reason or other. Maybe it's all the silly films they put on TV. Little antenna here. And we've got some marks on its body. These are like little, little wave bits here. And every spider has got a different kind of pattern on it, which is quite amazing. Every single spider that ever lived is completely different than the ones before. I find that quite incredible. There we go. So I'll just give that a minute to dry. And then the good thing about this is you can actually move this around and put it on, put it on things like this. So it almost becomes like a little puppet, doesn't it? Moves around like that. 
So I'll leave that to dry for a bit. Okay, everybody, I have cut out my mini bees here that I made and I've placed them animals that live above the ground animals that live on the ground and animals that live under and you can you can cut out a lot more and you can use this little chart here to help you as well uh, i'm going to do another dragonfly because this one has only got two wings but i have also um made some of my mini beasts on this on the see-through plastic so i can kind of put that on i could stick it with glue if you wanted to stay there or if you want to move them around, you can just uh, put a little bit of blue tack on there like that. I've got a very large snail here. He's a bit too large maybe to fit on. And I've got my, this is called a, a millipede, which has got even more legs than a centipede. I'll put him down there because I think they do live under the ground sometimes. And I've got one that's above the ground here, a lovely big bumblebee. And I can move them around any way that I like. You can also use them as um, puppets if you wanted to. Make a little story about it and tell it to your sister or brother. Uh, I've got here, um, I made a cake last night, so I saved the eggshells. Uh, they're nice and clean. Uh, when you break the egg and take the inside out to use for your cooking, uh, there's a membrane inside, it's like a skin. So if you pull the skin out, and then give it a wash with a bit of detergent and dry them. So today, they're really good. They won't smell because I've taken out that skin. I've got my little ant here, and this little snail here was drawn with my very thin pen, which is really nice. If you can get one of those, that's brilliant. I've got more ants here. Uh, you could uh, find a way of putting them on here if you want, or you could make a horizontal model with all these little creatures on, uh, and you can move them about and make a little play about them. There's a lovely little ant there. Where's the ant? There it is. Like that there. And you could draw other beasts on them too and make a little uh, scenario that you can tell a story about or tell a story to somebody at home. All right, everybody, I'm just going to say goodbye. Uh, please send me in the pictures of what you do. I really love to see what you do. And I will put them on the website for you. Bye.